Hi there, this is Michael Becker, and in this Tinderbox lesson, we're going to look at something really cool. And this is going to be using the concept of code notes and caching variables to be able to optimize the use of your action code within your notes and within your Tinderbox, and to be able to help facilitate your ability to easily edit, create, manage uh, your action code. So let's just jump right in and do it. Okay, so here I've got an open Tinderbox file, and we're just going to create a note. And we're going to say a note to manipulate with an action code and code note. All right, so we have a note here called a note to manipulate with action code and a code note. So let's open up our inspector and just demonstrate applying a rule to manipulate this note. So we're going to say if checked equals true then have color equals green else we'll have color equal and then just so you know seven is the uh, standard number for calling out the a standard kind of default color for a tinderbox note so what we're saying here is if checked equals true then color equals green else color equals seven all right so we're just going to go ahead and lock that in and now we're going to go over to our note here we're going to add the attribute checked by clicking this box all right we've got the actor attribute checked. now watch when i check this it turns green so you and uncheck it it turns nope I did something wrong here oh look what i did wrong I didn't capitalize the C. So if now if I uncheck it, whoops, got to lock that change in. Now if I uncheck it, there you go. So now we see um, color going back and forth with uh, with that code note. So that action code's great. Now let's go ahead and create ourselves a code note. We'll call it code note color change. Okay. And so now what we want to do is rather than having the action code happen in uh, the the note itself, we want this note referring to the code note. So that way we can make our edits in a, in a code note and have it affect all of the other notes that refer to it. It really makes for a lot of um, e ease and scalability uh, when you're managing your Tinderbox files. So we can just go ahead and write our code, our, our copy and paste our, our action code in, into the text note of the code note to make that happen. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna show you something. Uh, if I just type color equals, and then see how, what just happened? When I tried to make a straight quote, a straight quote are the quotes that Tinderbox wants. See, every time I make a straight quote, the, uh, the formatting tools are converting it to smart quote because a smart quote, also known as a stylized quote or a curly quote, is what we use for stylized writing. But for coding purposes, you want what's called a straight quote or a dumb quote. So the question is, well, how do you change that? There's a number of ways to do it. Um, the, and I'm just gonna focus on the one that you should uh, use when you're doing code notes. Uh, and the way to do that is go ahead and go to File, New, Add a Prototype, and Create Code, uh, and, and use the Code Prototype. Now, what the Code Prototype does is it uh, uh, makes the text field of a note, uh, when the Code Prototype's applied to it, into applying the Code Font, as well as it disables um, the changing of Smart Quotes. So, watch this. If I type Color... And then I say equals, you see that it keeps the uh, quotes as to straight quotes, uh, AKA dumb quotes, doesn't convert them, and therefore we have good code. So that's what you wanna have um, when you are making a code note, is you wanna apply the code prototype. Now let's go ahead, so I don't wanna waste time um, uh, retyping this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this out of the rule of this note and put it into the code note. Okay, so now I can paste it in there. And now what you're going to see is, so if checked equals true, color equals uh, green, else it equals seven. Now, how do we go ahead linking this note to the code note? Well, that's actually pretty easy. Um, there's an action code called action. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to type uh, in, the, in the note that you want to apply this code note. We say action, and then we apply it. And what we do is we say text. And so here's a, a, a really important concept with Tinderbox is that you have the ability to link attribute concepts um, and, uh, to other notes. Uh, and so you can basically pull values from other notes uh, and aka cached values from other notes um, with, with this mechanism. And it, have, it applies in a variety of ways 
um, throughout your experience and use of Tinderbox. I'm just going to happen to show you one, and then in other videos, you'll see others. And over time, you're going to really um, hopefully get the idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the name of this note. I'm going to go back to this action code, and then I'm going to put parentheses, quote, the name of the note. Now, if you didn't want to do it this way, I could do the path. So I, since we're on the root folder, I could do it that way. If that note was in a subfolder, I could type subfolder, folder, you know, and then the path. So if I had a sub, if I had a note called subfolder here, and this note was dropped in like that, that's how I would get to that note. So I could have it be a path. So there's a variety of ways to link to that note. In this in this demonstration, we're just going to uh, put in the name of the note close the parentheses and then make sure when you're writing your code notes so that's two those those open and close each other we're going to close the next one and then we complete the action code so essentially what we're saying is um in this rule is we're saying perform the action go to uh you know get text from this note and then use that text as the action and again our action is this so let's go ahead and hit return and lock that in okay now watch what happens when I go here and I check, turns on and off. And so what, what's happening is this note is referring to the uh, this action here. And so now what I can do, let's say I want to build another note with that same uh, rule. And if I had a prototype, I wouldn't need to be doing that copying and pasting. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a check here. Okay. And checked. And oops, see, nothing happens when I check. And now if I paste in the action code into that note, and now I check, you see it's happening. So we now have the ability to make that happen. Now, what's this, this is what's fun. Now watch what happens here. Let's say we change the color in the action code to yellow. Okay, and now I wanna go to these and uncheck. Now the default color is yellow when it's not checked. So you have this ability to really easily manipulate your action code. Now, when you have a simple one line action code, like I've just shown you here, you don't really need to use a code note. It's not that big of a deal, but let me go over here and copy in a more complex um, code note. And this is also gonna show you a description of what we call caching variables. So take a look at this one. So let's say we're doing a, um, uh, uh, one of the other lessons I'm, I'm working on for you guys is a, a lesson on doing a daily journals and, um, um, and task tracking and project tracking. Um, so let's say if the start date is never and the due date is never, then I, and, and, it's, and it's false, I want you to you know, change the color to yellow. So that reminds me visually to tell me to go add dates to those milestones and those projects and those to-dos. Um, otherwise, I want you to set the color to red if the date, uh, if the due date is before the start date, so if they've gotten reversed, and then um, if everything's okay, then just set the 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 um, date of data back to uh, normal uh, default colors, or to the, to the default values. And a, by the way, uh, a, a trick in Tinderbox is if you say any attribute equals semicolon, that is setting that attribute for that note to the default value uh, for uh, within Tinderbox, either to the prototype or to Tinderbox in general. And then we've got another item here that says, you know, if the if the uh, the checkbox is true, then we want to set the date to now, the end date to now, complete, uh, set the status to complete, uh, and it's badge to OK. So if you notice here, we've got a few new variables uh, that we want to be able to add in here. And the reason why that failed, right away, that why it defaulted back to the original color, is I've got some cached variables in here. So I've got color equals yellow, for example. Uh, is a cache variable. The reason why we're doing that, and let me be clear on that, is if you've got hundreds of notes and you have Tinderbox constantly changing and updating its value, you know, change it to change it to yellow, change it to red. Um, that will take processing power uh, and and slow down uh, the overall performance of your Tinderbox file. If you cache fi uh, values. Um, then you won't have to make that change. So if you go back to the original example, we said, you know, make it green or make it red. Um, and what would, what that meant was every time that check was performed or every time that if that statement was performed, it would make it green or red. It would take the action of making green or red, which again, takes processing power and time. Um, in this case, if yellow make the color yellow, or if not yellow make the um, if it's not the uh, the the cached value of color yellow, 
um, if the color is not the cache value of color yellow, then don't do anything. And so what by caching variables like this, and we'll talk about this in another lesson later, um, what you're able to effectively do is um you know be able to get tinderbox to stop doing certain actions you know when the conditional statements don't match so in order to make this um this, this work we need to create a couple cached values so let's go ahead here to our attributes and we'll create a couple new ones so we've got color yellow is one and we want to and we'll make it a string and its default value is yellow okay so we'll create that one and we'll create one more this one is color red, and its default value is red. Okay, so that one's now created. Um, so we have those two uh, now created. And then let's see, do we have any more in here? And then while we're at it, why don't we go to the note? And so now you see that I have those default values in place. It automatically switched back and worked. And let's go ahead and add a couple of the other items so you can just see it. Badge, um, start date, end date and due date, which were the three other uh, variables we had in that rather extensive action code. So um, now you'll see here we have those. And because, look at this, because the end date and start date are never, and it's not checked, we've made the color yellow. So now let's go ahead and just show you this. So if I go 4121, and we'll say 5121. Okay, so it's not checked, and the start date, end dates are, are going to have values, um, and the uh, the uh, the due date is after the start date. So when I do that, um, that you know you see it defaults back to the uh, default color. Now if I switch this around and I say let's make the start date after the due date, and do that. You see it now it changes the color to red. So you'll see our if then statements are working. And then if we make it dot do, it adds the badge checked and then uh, turns it to green. And if I uncheck it, it puts it back to that state. So you can see this would be a lot of code. Let me go ahead and paste it for you. If I'm over here and I'm trying to do this in a rule um, like, like this, I'll do it in a new note so I don't mess up the, the demo. You'll see if I'm over here in a rule like this, a lot of code to kind of manipulate and manage and um, you, it's easy to make a mistake with the nesting so um, doing it in a uh, code note like this uh, just makes it a lot easier to edit and, and manage your code so with that um, that is an example of how to do code notes and how to um, start getting it you're wrapping your head around um, you know caching variables and I'll show you other examples how to cache variables in um, other videos So thank you very much and be sure to uh, please like this um, video if you found value in it, uh, please subscribe to it and um, Let me know what other kind of lessons you want to hear. Thank you very much I'm Looking forward to hearing your comments and oh don't forget to um, connect with me on LinkedIn. Thanks. Bye